This is going to be a quick tip on using the military grid reference system and shooting an azimuth. Help you get to your point. Verifying our start point now at 7, 6, 8, 9. That's what we're going to be looking for now. Okay, we found 7, 6. Follow the line all the way down. You've got to find the cross line here of 8, 9. There's 8, 9. Our block is up to the right there. Now we've found our uh, grid square. We've got to find our point inside of the grid square. We're going to first line up using this line here, which is 7, 6. We're going to place the corner right there. Our grid is square that we need is to the right, technically. But we need to find point 7, 6, 0, 0. The zero, 0, represents how many spaces we're going to move to the right. In this case, 0. Now we have to work with 8, 9, 7, 5. We already have the line for 8, 9 for the grid square, so we have to move 7, 5. So you line up your protractor at the point. You'll go up to 7, or 7. And then in between 7 and 8 is where you'll find 5, right there, about. It is because between 7 and 8 there's 10 lines and 5 is in the middle. Now we've got to move on to our next point. We need to find point 24, so we're going to be working with 7, 6, 9, 0. Now I'm going to zoom out here so we can trace out our next grid square that we need. Okay, we got 7, 6. We're going to follow that down until we had the intersection point that we need, which will be 9, 0. Follow that across. That's right where 7, 6, and 9, 0 intersect. The square that we need is then up and to the right. That is the grid square that we're going to use. That will be our final destination point of 24 in there somewhere. All right, now we're going to work with 7, 6, 1, 3 inside of the grid square we just located. Take your protractor, making sure it is right side up so the words are legible on it. That's a common mistake. Go ahead and place it on the corner. That's line 7, 6, which means we're working to the right of that. Go ahead and go over till you hit 1. Now, between 1 and 2 is 10 lines, and we need to get to 3 in those 10 lines. So keep sliding till you hit 3. That's approximately 3. Now we have to work with 9, 0, 1, 7. Okay, now still holding the protractor in place. That's the line, 0 line. We'll go up from there till we get to 1. Now we have to work in between there again. Between the 1 and 2, we have to go to 7. There's 10 lines, so count until you reach 7, and that is your point of intersection. Okay, now that we have our point, I'm going to go ahead and clearly mark it, 24. And we need to figure out our degree heading. Zoom out a little here. You're going to use the protractor. You're going to find the crosshairs on the protractor that look just like you know, a weapons crosshairs. Making sure that it's right side up again. This, this will mess you up really bad. If the words are not legible, you're probably upside down. Go ahead and take those crosshairs. Place them over the start point or whatever your last point was, your last known point. Place it over and line it up as best you can making sure that those crosshairs are parallel to the lines on the map as best you can. Again, this map's a little off. Now you're going to need a straight edge, which you can use the compass for. You can go ahead and line up your start point and point 24, our destination. Start point, point 24, and then you follow the straight edge up until you reach the degree headings, which is the first set of numbers, 360 degrees. Disregard the upper numbers. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and 
take a closer look here. It's right about on the 19 there. So we're at 19 degrees on a grid. That's important. Now we have to use the GM angle to compensate. All right. We're going from a grid to magnetic, not magnetic to grid. So to convert a grid azimuth to magnetic azimuth, subtract the GM angle, which was 17. And right there on the map, 17. So we'll go ahead and do the basic math there. We've got 19 degrees minus 17 degrees which leaves us with two degrees which is what you will use with your compass alright two degrees is our heading that's our direction of travel now we need to figure out our distance of travel which can be fairly easy it's kind of convenient since we already have the tools on hand using the protractor that's zero two essentially 1,000 is 1,000 meters. It lines up perfectly with the measurements the map provides. Again, some protractors are a little bit off and you must understand that this could offset your measurements entirely, so make sure you're using an accurate protractor. Now we're going to go ahead and line it up. Okay, now we got point 24 and our start point. I'm going to place the zero on our start point using that straight edge as close as I can to our point 24 dot and then we're just going to go ahead and simply count 0, 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, 400 meters all right, we're about all set here got 400 meters written down so we don't forget our distance 2 degrees is our heading 400 meters now it's time to work on the compass All right, now taking your compass in hand, you got the fixed black line. That's going to line up with your degree heading, which in this case is 2 degrees. The camera angle is a little off, so you'll have to just accept that. But you want to line that up with your degree heading as precise as possible. And you're going to take your bezel, and you're going to turn it. And you're going to line that up with the arrow that points north. And when that is in place, that is essentially your azimuth there. Take some fine tuning and so forth, but again, you have to excuse the camera angle there. But basically, you want two degrees on your black line and then the movable line lined up with your north heading of your compass. All right, now with our compass adjusted, we're going to just verify it, making sure that you hold it level. If it's not level, it'll lock in place and your degrees could be way off. You're going to go ahead and hold it as level as possible. Look off in the distance, pick an object that is uh, within reason that you can get to and you won't lose count. You're going to go ahead and you can lift up your compass. Again, you've got to still hold it level and you can line everything up so that you can actually see through the magnifying glass. You can see down a degree heading and then look through the hole and actually see your object in the distance to know how accurate you are. And then go ahead and start your pace. Now there's a couple more tools to your advantage that will help you keep your pace. I'm picking up four rocks because we're going 400 meters. Now I happen to know my pace is 63 steps to 100 meters. So every time my left foot hits the ground, I count one. Knowing my pace, I count the entire time to keep track of the amount of distance I've traveled. Here we are again at the four rocks that I collected earlier that represent 100 meters each. Every time I reach 100 meters, I place one in my pocket. The reason being is that if I lose track of what I'm doing or I'm paying attention to something else, uh, 
I can still reach out of my pocket, grab the rocks, know that my total was four, and I can see how far I've traveled. Helps keep track for me. The last tool that I'm showing here is terrain association. If you look at my finger there, you can see the very faded lines. They show you all different terrain features. You'll be going uphill in this case. You can see the mountain off to your left, one straight ahead. Using those will also help you keep track of your location and making sure you're accurate.